China and the U.S. have agreed to ease restrictions on each other's media workers amid a slight easing of tensions between two sides. The announcement in the official China Daily newspaper Wednesday said the agreement was reached ahead of Tuesday's virtual summit between Chinese leader Xi Jinping and U.S. President Joe Biden. Limits on media workers have fueled tensions between the two countries for more than a year. Under the agreement, the U.S. will issue one-year multiple-entry visas to Chinese media workers. China will reciprocate by granting equal treatment to U.S. journalists once the U.S. policies take effect. Ethiopia's human rights watchdog said Wednesday it had barred from visiting detained rounded up in mass arrest under a wartime state of emergency. The state-affiliated Ethiopian Human Rights Commission estimated thousands have been caught up in the latest sweep, which lawyers and rights groups say appear largely to target Tigrayans based on their ethnicity alone. The government says the operations are a legitimate effort to stamp out the Tigray People's Liberation Front, its adversary in a year-long war in the country's north. Turkish police detained celebrated Syrian singer Omar Suleiman Wednesday and questioned him about alleged ties to outlawed Kurdish militants, his manager told AFP. Suleiman was brought in for questioning in the southern Turkish city where he's been running a bakery since escaping Syria's decade-long civil war in 2011. This, according to his manager, who asked not to be identified. Suleiman was being questioned over local media allegations that he had ties to the Kurdistan Workers' Party, which is prescribed as a terrorist organization by Ankara, the U.S. and the EU. Two Sudanese protesters were shot dead and more wounded, medics said, when thousands rallied Wednesday against last month's coup, chanting, quote, no to military power, end quote, amid clouds of tear gas. The fatalities in Khartoum raised to 26 the death toll from unrest since the October 25th military takeover, said the Central Committee of Sudanese Doctors and Independent Union of Medics. Several rallies broke out across Khartoum, even though telephone lines were cut and Internet services have been disrupted since the coup, AFP journalists reported. Armed police and soldiers patrolled Uganda's capital Wednesday after twin suicide bombings claimed by the Islamic State group killed four people, the latest in a string of attacks in the East African country. Checkpoints have been set up on several roads in Kampala, while the areas where the two bombings occurred in the heart of the capital have been closed off to motorists as teams of investigators scour the blast sites. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, on a visit to neighboring Kenya, said the bombings highlighted the need to improve security across the region. Cambodia has released 27 activists jailed over charges of incitement against strongman Hun Sen's government as the country prepares to host international talks. Among those released in the past 12 days were members of environment group Mother Nature Cambodia, as well as an outspoken union leader, according to the deputy director of rights group Likado Wednesday. Cambodia is due to host an online summit of Asian and European leaders next week. Ukraine's armed forces have conducted drills near the borders of Russian annexed Crimea, the defense ministry said in a statement Wednesday amid growing tensions to the country's frontiers. The drills simulated Ukrainian Marines, tanks and aircraft repelling an enemy attack, the defense ministry said. Earlier this month, Ukrainian border guards, police and the National Guard also held drills on the border with Belarus aiming to protect the country from possible attempts by migrants to breach the frontier. Ukrainian authorities have said Russia has left military units near the Ukrainian border after exercises holding a series of large-scale drills. U.S. officials said they were worried about the buildup of Russian military power near Ukraine. U.S. lawmakers will vote Wednesday to censure a Trump loyalist for posting an animated video depicting him killing a colleague and attacking President Joe Biden in a rare move underlining the hostility between opposing sides of Congress. Far-right Congressman Paul Gosar will be on the end of a public shaming if the punishment goes ahead.
Hi, thank you for watching. I hope the videos are useful for you. Please subscribe to my channel using the button below.